All praises are due to Allah. We thank Him and praise Him and testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad is His hand-picked messenger. May the peace, mercy and blessing of Allah be upon Rasulullah, his family and whoever follows him towards righteousness until the day of Qiyam. And my bad, today's khutbah is about the difference between dunya and jannah. The short life of this world and the eternity of the life hereafter and of course the eternity and the light in jannah. The reality of Jannah, which is paradise, is something which people will never be able to understand until they actually enter in the in Jannah. We can only understand the reality of Jannah when we learn ourselves in Jannah. But words cannot describe it. We cannot think about it. We can't talk about it. We cannot see anything that is comparable to Jannah as far as dunya is concerned. But Allah has shown us the glimpse in the Quran. 
Paradise is a place where all the blessings have been created perfectly and where people will be offered everything that their souls and their hearts desire. Everything is perfect. There is no perfection in this dunya, but in Jannah everything is perfect. And that people will be far removed from want and need in Jannah. Anxiety or sadness, sorrow or regret is a thing in the past as far as being in Jannah is concerned. Every kind of beauty and blessing exists in Jannah. And it will be revealed with a perfection never seen or known before. It will be revealed with a perfection that has never been seen, that has never been known, and that has never been perceived before. Allah has prepared such blessing there as a gift. And this will be offered only to people with whom Allah is pleased. Allah will be pleased with them and they will be pleased with Allah. Radiallahu anhum wa radu an. No wonder if an individual like this will be addressed by the angel of death. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya. Come and take a return to your Lord. Radiyatan mardiyya. Well pleased and well pleasing. فَدُخُلُوا فِي إِبَادِي Enter among my servant. وَدُخُلِي جَنَّتِي And enter my Jannah. So if we find ourselves in Jannah, if we find ourselves in Jannah, it is with the mercy and pleasure of Allah. And we will never be sad again. Now, what is the nature of these delights in Jannah? As compared to the limited period and transitory life that we have in this dunya. The delight in Jannah, by delight I mean happiness. By delight I mean satisfaction of the heart. By delight I mean pleasure. By delight I mean everything that pleases the soul, within and without, internally and externally, can only be found in Jannah. So what is the nature of the delight in Jannah as compared to dunya? The nature of the delight in Jannah is pure delight without, without pain and suffering. Pure delight in Jannah without any pain or suffering. While people in dunya experience some delight, they also face much of toil and suffering. Dunya and India, and India tano lekata. Adina fi bane ak nahar nyo anda. Dina mer, dina nyla tony, dina nyla saga, dina nyla tital, dina nyla tuti, dina nyla doyadil. Bo kontane tuti, linga mer sa kudem moy opa. Nyo fulo lekata nyin dunya ko. If one was to scrutinize the life which they live, they will find that the amount of hardship they face is much more than the ease and comfort. If we compare our life, sit back and say, you're right, you know what? My entire life, what is the comparison when it comes to my happiness and sadness? We will conclude by, by saying that we are more stressed or more unhappy then we are happy by comparison overall. All the causes of sorrow, pain, and suffering which people experience in dunya will be absent in the life hereafter if an individual lands himself in Jannah. Let's take, for example, wealth. Wealth that everyone is toiling for. That people are even go to, they're, they're ready to go the extra mile to earn wealth to earn food, shelter, and clothing, regardless to whether it's the right thing to do, regardless to whether people's property are being usurped, regardless to the fact whether people are being attacked in order to have this wealth, some people more, more it is more of the rule than is, is the exception, that people don't even care how this wealth comes, whether someone's life is at stake, whether someone's dignity is at stake, whether someone's status is at stake, it doesn't matter so long as I have this wealth. When one thinks of success in this life, they do usually think about big houses, fine jewelry, clothing, in other words, food shelter and clothing at its peak, expensive cars, financial stability. This is seen, this is, this is regarded, it's regarded by many as the source of happiness in this dunya, even though that's not the case. How many times have we seen the wealthiest of people living miserable lives, some will even commit suicide. 
How many million years? The millions that we are, we are, we are, we are toiling for. How many million years committed suicide when we still decide not to commit suicide? So being wealthy is not the issue then. That will not bring happiness. That it sometimes even lead to committing suicide. Wealth is something which humans in their very nature desire at any cost. People will want to be wealthy at any cost. When this desire is not satiated, when this desire is not satisfied, it causes some extent of grief in a person. For this reason, God has promised the inhabitants of Jannah that they will have all that they imagine as far as wealth and belongings are concerned. Both for those who are poor, those who are poor will be given everything that they want, everything beyond their imagination. And those who were well off in dunya will be given more than expectation. No wonder Allah said clearly in the Quran, there will be there or there will be there all the souls could desire. Everything that you desire will be in Jannah. All that the eyes could delight in will be in Jannah. وَفِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِهِ الْأَنفُسِ وَتَلَذُّذُ الْأَعَيُنِ Allah said, وَفِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِهِ الْأَنفُسِ وَتَلَذُّذُ الْأَعَيُنِ The apple of the eye will be in Jannah. وَأَنْتُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ And you will dwell there forever. Imagine the goodness of this dunya. After 100 years maximum or so, or a bit, that's it. The car you own will be yours. Everything that you were enjoying in dunya after death ceases to be yours. But Allah said in Jannah, wa antum fiha khalidun. You will dwell there in forever. Forever means there won't be any limitation to it. You will never die again. Forever means there is no end. Allah is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And his beginning, he is the first without any beginning and the last without any end. We will inherit that time, that thing. That status. Allah will give us that status that there will be no end in our lives when we earn ourselves in Jannah. But here we are preparing to go anytime, soon. It could be a second, a minute, a day, a month, a, a, one year, 10, 20, 50, 60. But there is no doubt about that. That none of us here will have 70 years added to, he, to what he has already. Some might not even expect 40 or 50 added to what we have. But where we are going, Allah said, you will dwell therein forever if you earn yourself Jannah. In Jannah, the people of Jannah, the Jannati will be addressed by Allah, Kulu washrabu hani'an bima aslaftum fil ayyamil khaliya. Kulu washrabu hani'an. Allah will say, eat and drink at ease. You are not going, don't be in a rush. You are not running for any hours. Time is not against you. You have time. Eat and drink at ease. Relax. Where are you going? Nowhere. Just eat. Enjoy yourself. Eat and drink at ease. For that which you have sent forth. This is something you have worked for. Kulu washrabu hani'am bima aslaftum fil ayyamil khaliya. For what you have sent forth in the days past. Allah is addressing the Jannati. Eat and drink. You have worked for this. And I have showed my mercy unto you by making you enter into Jannah. So eat and drink. Take your time. Don't rush. Because you're not going to die. You will enjoy forever. Yeah, Allah. Why this? Because you worked for it and I accept it. I, I came down to your level and accepted, or accepted it on your behalf. Bima aslaftum fil ayyamil khaliya. Linga gita lon. Buninyi neke china kasudud nonu. Yo danga nekon jambar. Linga gita lon. Yenyi netambindi nung. Ikoma. Kabiri ibe dunia. Molbe la nidi ya noma. Ite yenyi netambindi. Bile inata atineje. Domoro ke ye ming. Koronto titije. Kulu washrabu hanian. Bima aslaftum fil ayyamil khaliya. Again, the jannati will be addressed by Allah. They will be adorned therein with, with bracelets of gold, not 23 karat gold. When I say a million karat gold, that's an understatement. The gold of Jannah cannot be compared. 
What is the highest character that people want to have, or want to achieve? The richest countries are those with more gold than the rest. And what are the characters? The gold in Jannah, compared to the one in Dunia, the only similitude is by name. If you have a chain 25, 20, or whatever character you have, in Jannah, it will be billions of carat without any exaggeration. That is actually an understatement because this is coming from Allah. This is what Allah said. They will be adorned therein with, with, with bracelets of gold and they will wear green garments of fine silk and heavy brocade. Best quality material from Allah. Not the dunya standard. From Allah. They will recline therein on raised thrones. Everyone will be a king. Not compared to the kings we know here. A king on thrones. How good is the recompense? Allah is asking. How good is the recompense? How beautiful a couch. How beautiful a couch to recline on. This is what Allah said clearly in the Quran. Quran. <laughs> وَيَلْبَسُونَ ثِيَابًا خُضُرًا مِنْ سُنْدُسٍ وَإِسْتَبْرَقٍ مُتَّكِئِينَ فِيهَا عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ نِعَمَ نِعَمَ الثَّوَابُ وَحَسُنَتْ مُرْتَفَقًا This is what Allah said. What prepared only for the dwellers of Jannah. Now let's compare this dunya to Jannah. Talking about death and disease, illness and death. Is only present in dunya. Another cause of pain and suffering in this dunya is the death of a loved one or a disease that attacks you or a loved one. A, de a death, the angel of death that visits you or the loved ones, which are both non-existent in Jannah. Death and disease, illness, non-existent in Jannah. None will feel any sickness or pain in Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ said about Jannah, they will never fall ill. The Jannati. Al Jannah dun kewal. They will never fall ill. They will never blow their nose. And they will never spit. Al Jannah amut tufli amut nyandu. Subhanallah. Dajio ka ka da ka foko mbatunga dajio dajio tupi wati je. Manunga nunga fe wati al Jannah. Pure and clean all the time. Always. Until eternity, without any limitation. This is what we need to work for, and time is against us. None will die in Jannah. All shall live eternally, enjoying the pleasures therein. The Prophet ﷺ said that a caller will call in Jannah. A proclamation will be made. Someone will proclaim. Like if, if we are in Jannah, we will hear an announcement. According to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in Sahih Muslim, he said someone will make an announcement saying, "Indeed, may you be healthy and never get get sick again." He would proclaim, he would make an announcement, "May you be healthy and never get sick again. May you live and never die again. May you be young and never grow weak and feeble again. May you enjoy and never feel sorrow and regret again." This is an authentic narration according to the Prophet وسلم, in Sahih Muslim. I will say this, and I will forgive you for all of you, and for all of the Muslims from all of you, and for all of you, and for all of you, and for all إن الحمد لله نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد أما بعد again the comparison between dunya and jannah the hardship of dunya and jannah this time around the social relations, the social relations in dunya compared to Jannah. As for the remorse felt due to a rift in personal relationship, 
People will never hear any evil or hurting comments or speech in Jannah. This is the norm now within ourselves. One to one in our groups, in the social media, Facebook, WhatsApp, YouTube. It is more of the rule than it is the exception that people are attacking each other, accusing each other, insulting each other, abusing each other, defaming each other, attacking each other's personality. This is only limited to dunya, not in Jannah. Allah said about Jannah, لا يسمعون فيها لغوا ولا تعثيما لا يسمعون فيها لغوا ولا تعثيما إلا قيلا سلاما سلاما Allah said in Jannah, they will not hear their in ill speech or speech or commission of sin. لا يسمعون فيها لغوا وَلَا تَعْثِيمًا No, a commission of sin. No one will commit sin in Jannah. So what will we hear? If at all we don't hear bad words, abusing each other. Kanyo neng, kanyo kajafi, kanyo doya, kabula nyom na wulu lala. Nimma woy, nimma womoy jannah. Bemune moyla kumaken dororong. Salaman, illa qilan, salaman, salama. Jannah amut sagante, amut hasante, amut jow, amut rambaj. Kon kui saga, di haste, di neka, def jiko finiste akrambaj, koku pelasam du janna, di janna lulu amufa. Lan mo neka janna, illa qilan salaman salama. It is such that the angels will come and shake your hands. If you learn yourself in janna, this is the respect that you will earn from the angels. They will come and shake your hands and say to you, Assalamu alaikum bima sabartum fa ni'ma uqbaddar. Peace and blessing of Allah be upon you for the patience you exercise in dunya. What an excellent abode. But only for those who exercise patience. Assalamu alaikum bima sabartum fa ni'ma uqbaddar. There will be no enmity between people, no ill feelings in Jannah. This is what Allah said in the Quran when He said, Part of this narration, part of this, this translation, Allah said, they will not hear their ring. Ill speak, no commission of sin. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, part of this narration is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and we shall remove from their breast, in other words, from their hearts, any mutual hatred and sense of injury. Allah said, I would remove that hatred among you. So you will love each other. There will be no hatred among you in Jannah. وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي هَدَانَا لِهَذَا And they would say, all praises are due to Allah who has guided us to this. أَمَا كُنَّا لِنَهْتَدِيَا لَوْ لَا أَنْ حَضَانَ اللَّهِ We would not have been guided if Allah decided not to guide us, if Allah had guided us. لَوْ لَا أَنْ حَضَانَ اللَّهِ So brothers and sisters, this is what is worth toiling for. But time is against us. The sooner the angel of death comes, that's it, our time is gone. We won't be able to have the opportunity to say, subhanallah, to earn ourselves a tree in Jannah that will take a horse 40, 40, 40, 40 days or months just to cover the sage. In our next khutbah, we will continue with this comparison between dunya and Jannah. اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت بارك لنا فيما اعطيت وقنا واشرف عنا شر ما قديت فانك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك انه لا يضل من واليت ولا يعز من اديت فباركت ربنا وتعاليت نستغفرك من كل ذنب ونتوب اليك ونؤمن بك ونتوكل عليك ونثني عليك الخير كله يا من يجير ولا يجار عليه اجرنا من النار ومن خزي النار ومن كل عمل نقربنا الى النار وادخلنا الجنه 
الأبرار يا عزيز يا جبار إنا نسألك رضاك والجنة ونعوذ بك من سختك والنار إنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل برحمتك يا عبيد يا غفار إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يدكم لعلكم تذكرون فذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون وأقيم الصلاة